Hello everyone, welcome to Exploring with Cindy and Dan. We're leaving Seattle, Washington for a wonderful seven-day cruise in Alaska in the Inside Passage featuring the Glacier Bay National Park with the Royal Princess. This video is all about the ports of calls for our cruise in Alaska, so please join us in this adventure. We are doing once again our favorite cruise, a seven-day cruise to Alaska with the ports of call of Ketchikan, Juneau, the capital of Alaska, Skagway, Victoria in British Columbia, Canada, and a glacier day in the inside passage of the Glacier Bay National Park, featuring the Reed, Lamplug, and Marjorie glaciers. We were traveling from August 12th through August 19, 2023, on a convenient weekend departure from Seattle. If you do not want to get off the ship in any of these ports, you really don't have to do so. You can just enjoy the Royal Princess with less people. A lot of places in the ship are open except for the casino and the shops of princes, because by the gambling and regulation laws, they have to remain closed until we sail away and reach international waters. But the Royal Princess has many things planned for you if you stay in the ship. On our Skagway day, my parents and my niece stay in the ship. They were able to enjoy live music with the Serendipity duo and the Souvenir duo, as well as people watch with the Sudoku challenge in the piazza, and Roya offered a North to Alaska show at the Princess Live in the afternoon. They also had a complimentary footprint analysis at the Lotus Spa on deck 5 forward and another complimentary acupuncture walking clinic in the same location. The tree house at Camp Discovery was also open so my niece could enjoy playing with other kids. The Alaska cruise season starts late April through the middle of October. Different cruise lines have different schedules. Princess Cruises to Alaska is from April to the end of September. If you are trying to save some money, you should book your cruise at the beginning of the season when it is a little bit colder, but you will experience everything as if you were sailing in the middle of the summer. As a suggestion to you, try not to book an Alaska cruise at the end of the season as the weather gets too unpredictable and you can get some of the ports of call canceled due to the weather. The Royal Princess is an amazing ship from the Royal class and has 19 decks. We have a couple of videos of the Royal Princess where we show you the entire ship deck by deck, so please don't forget to watch them. Our first port of call was Juno. On day 3 in the afternoon at around 12, we arrive in Juno, the capital of Alaska. Juno was founded as a gold mining camp back in 1880. It became the Alaska territorial capital in 1900. Like Ketchikan, Juno is only accessible by air or by water. Tlingit natives first populated the area thousands of years after discovering abundant salmon in the waters. Modern settlement did not develop until the late 19th century. It was a peaceful settlement until gold rush fever swept the nation and an enterprising mining engineer named George Pills offered a reward to any native who could produce gold. The Trinket chief, Kowi, presented a big nugget of gold to Pills and his partners Richard Harris and Joseph Juno. Harris initially named the area Harrisburg, but locals changed the name to reflect their partnership with Joe Juno. Established as an Alaskan capital in 1906, Juno is the largest state capital by land area and the only one that borders a foreign country. Juno is located in the southeast area of Alaska, 900 air miles north of Seattle and 600 air miles southeast of Anchorage. It is approximately 3,081 square miles and the only state capital in the United States with no road access. Juneau is not very cold. The average summer days are in the 60s, with many days reaching 70s and low 80s. And the average annual precipitation is 86.1 inches. At the Mount Roberts tramway, you can take a 5-minute tram ride to the top of Mount Roberts 
for a panoramic vantage point 1,800 feet above the city. The mountaintop attraction includes trails, shops, and nature displays. Once you get to the top of the mountain, the temperature is at least 5 degrees cooler. This is the Tracy King Crab Shack, another place are naturally suggested to visit while in Juno and try the king crab legs. You can eat the biggest crab legs in town. Each king crab leg is as long as your arms. Tracy King Crab Shack was born out of a dream to give people the ultimate Alaskan experience. While in port, we spotted multiple cruise ships, like for example the Celebrity Saltis, Holland Eurodam and Rotterdam, Holland Konungsdam, Disney Wonder and Carnival Luminosa. We had never cruised with a Holland cruise, but we cruised with Disney and Carnival, and they were very different cruise lines than Princess Cruise, but I know you will love them as much as we did. These coupon books are good in Juno, Ketchikan and Skagway. You can find huge savings and free items using the coupons in a specific store, so don't forget to get one on your first port of call. You can get free Northern Lines magnet or free shopping bags in every port of call or adult jackets for $30, fleece jackets for $20, and Ulu knife for only $5 and many more items with discounts. For the passengers who are doing the Princess excursions, they will meet at a specific location for each short excursion departure. So always look at your ticket for the correct place and time. Taxis are located pier side and always confirm your fare with the driver before leaving. Juno has a variety of souvenirs in local gift shops and general merchandise in the downtown area. If you need to go to a bank, you can find First National Bank, Wells Fargo and Key Bank. There are two visitors information centers in the downtown area. The main visitor information center is the Cruise Ship Terminal Visitor Information Center located at 470 South Franklin Street and the second one is Marine Park Kiosk at 292 Marine Way. The best points of interest in Juneau with the Princess Excursion are for example the Mendelho Glacier. It is a glacier 12 miles long and half a mile wide. It is 300 to 1,800 feet deep. This glacier has been slowly retreating since the mid-1700s. This glacier is just 12 miles from downtown Juneau and visitors can reach it by bus, taxi or the Princess Excursion Tour bus. Whale well watching is another excursion where you always see humpback whales or even killer whales. The orcas are common sightseeings in Juneau. Glacier flight scene is an awesome excursion. You will fly over the massive Juno ice field and get a front row seat to the Mendehall Glacier. You can see a spectacular ice falls that are accessible only from the air. A great short excursion is the Mendehall Glacier and the Well Quest excursion. This excursion was one of the passengers' favorite. After you finish with your excursion, you can do a self-guided walking tour in the pier area and visit some of the favorite locations like the Red Dog Saloon. You can stop there for a microbrew or try some of the restaurants in Juno. It just started to rain while we were heading back to our ship. This is our fourth day in Alaska and this is our second port of call, Skagway. Royal Princess docks within walking distance of downtown Skagway, but last year there were three rock slides at the pier and they caused damage to the dock and they led to the full closure of the dock last year. And for the safety of the passengers and crew, we were not allowed to walk at the dock. In the morning of our Skagway day, we had to collect tickets at the photo gallery on deck 6 midship for a water shuttle ticket system disembarkation. After you collect your ticket, announcements were made in the piazza area calling guests to the water shuttle by groups. Full suites and elite members had a priority water shuttle lounge where they could wait for the group to be called. Guests confined to wheelchairs and motorized scooters would not be able to use the water shuttle service for safety reasons. But guests who were able to move assisted by the crew independently of their wheelchair or scooter were able to use the water shuttles. There is another type of shuttle available from the pier where you get dropped off by the water shuttles to downtown Skagway for $2 per person each direction. 
or $5 for an all-day pass. Just look for the smart bus. I don't know if they were working the day of our Skagway stop, but a couple of weeks before our cruise, they were available for passengers. Taxis are not available in Skagway. And the only bank in Skagway was Wells Fargo, and it was open. Skagway has two visitor information centers, and the main one is between 2nd and 3rd Street, just when you arrive into town. Skagway was founded in 1897 and officially incorporated in 1900. Skagway is located in a narrow glaciated valley at the head of the Taiya Inlet. It is located 90 miles northwest of the capital city, Juneau. The population of Skagway is 1,036, but in the summer months the population doubles for the tourist season, and during the gold rush, the population went as high as 10,000 people. Their average temperature ranges from 45 to 67 degrees Fahrenheit, and received less rain than a typical Southeast Alaska town. Skagway only receives 27 inches of rain a year, so it is known as the sunshine capital of Southeast Alaska. People from Canada's Yukon Territory visit Skagway regularly in the spring to escape the northern cold. We just arrived at the pier and it only took around three minutes to get from the ship to the pier. The Skagway name was not the original name of the town. The Tlingit people indigenous to the area originally named it Skagwa and many outsiders spelled it wrong, and then the post office changed it to Skagway in 1899. As in any other cities or towns in Alaska, make sure that you look all around you while in port, as you will see many different wildlife that come into the port's town. For instance, one of our cruises to Alaska, we spotted a big majestic bald eagle just on top of a roof while waiting for a bus. And a couple of cruises ago, a naturalist told us that there was a black bear in a little pocket meadow in Juneau. And also, we spotted a black bear family a couple of cruises ago in Skagway. One of the best points of interest in Skagway with a princess excursion is the White Pass and Yukon Route Railroad. It is a scenic railway of the world and it links Skagway with the Yukon, Canada. It is a 41 mile round trip that offers the passengers an unforgettable journey to the summit of the White Pass at nearly 3,000 feet in elevation. And this is the train that will take you to the summit. If you want to do this excursion or any other excursion with Princess Cruise, just go down to deck five plus a deck forward and head to the shore excursion desk to book your excursion. It looks like the whole cruise is walking towards the Skagway. This is a sight that you don't see very often while in Alaska. Chinookin and pink salmon spawn in creek and pond in July and in August. Adult salmon spawn in fresh water where female salmon lay thousands of eggs that are fertilized by male salmon. Spawning can occur in spring, summer, fall or winter and depends on the salmon species. After spawning, adult salmon die and their bodies provide nutrients for the freshwater ecosystem. For the passengers who are doing the princess excursions, they will meet at a specific location for each short excursion departure. So always look at your ticket for the correct place and time, just like you did in the previous port of call. Now we are finally arriving in downtown Skagway. The Visitor Information Center 
is also a small museum with a small theater at the back of the building. You can use the bathroom facilities and ask for information about the city of Skagway. While in Skagway, if you have time, you should check out the Klondike Summit, that is also called the White Pass Summit, and it rises 3,292 feet above sea level. Along the Klondike Highway, it runs parallel to the White Pass and Yukon Route Railroad, and it offers breathtaking views of waterfalls, glaciers, and scenic views. Skagway also offers the Gold Rush History Excursion. It is a tour of the camps of the Gold Rush. You can pan for gold and meet a few costume characters who will show you what life was like during the days in the 1800s. You can also plan for a Yukon Adventure Excursion. It is a 65-mile drive from Skagway. Whitehorse is the center of the Yukon's mining and forestry industries, and it is a welcoming spot for visitors, especially for cruisers. If you go to the Yukon area, don't forget to bring your passport with you. Everywhere you walk in Skagway, you will see a lot of history and many museums, but most of the museums were closed due to shortage of staff. Skagway has suffered so much during pandemic that if you can help out buying souvenirs or spending some time in the restaurants, it will be great for the people of Skagway. For those who like elephant ears and different type of popcorns, there are two stores that sell these treats and they are amazing. The clothing and t-shirts inside this souvenir store, just at the entrance of the town, were so, so funny. This is Wells Fargo, the only bank that you can find in Skagway, and it was open. Skagway also have dog sledding excursion with professional mushers and their amazing dogs companions, and they will introduce you to the Alaska state sport. You can take a flight to a glacier and experience flying over the snow or visit the summertime training grounds for a ride in a wheeled sled. Skagway is our favorite port of call in Alaska. No matter where you go in Skagway, you will feel like you're stepping back in time. This year, some of the neat museums we used to visit were closed to the public, but maybe they will reopen for next summer. The Moore Homestead is the remaining land from William and Ben Moore's original 160-acre homestead claim in Skagway. And the Moore cabin that you will see is the oldest structure in town built in 1887. And the city has this house as a museum for the visitors, but it was closed. We've been inside the museum in a previous cruise and two rooms have been restored to the Victorian era charm. Other rooms feature exhibits about the family, life in the frontier town, the interracial marriage between Ben Moore and Tlinglet Sayet. This building is the second visitor center in Skagway. During the gold rush, the Red Onion Saloon was a Skagway most exclusive bordello. Now this colorful establishment is a bar, museum and a restaurant, and also it is considered a national historic building. This is the train shop building, and you can buy a White Pass Summit excursion for a two to three hour ride, round trip for $150 per person, or a bus ride for $52 per person. And remember again, bring your passport with you as you will be entering into Canada.
the morning departures are at 7.30 and 8.30 a.m. and the afternoon departures are at 12.30 p.m. and 1.30 p.m. Most visitors to Skagway think of it as a gold rush town and are surprised when learning that the area is also known for spectacular botanicals and farms. During the summer of 1898, local residents took to farming and were delighted with fruitful results. In 1910, Skagway was proclaimed the Garden City of Alaska. Now we are heading back to our ship to meet with the rest of the family. On day five of our cruise, at around 6.10 a.m., we approached Bartlett Cove and we picked up the Glacier Bay National Park Rangers. On a previous cruise to Alaska with the Majestic Princess, I was recently told that we usually pick up two park rangers and an Alaska Geographic employee. It was very foggy in the morning. Between 7.30 and 7.45 a.m., there was a ranger morning welcome at the Vista Lounge on deck 7 aft of the ship. And at 8 a.m., the commentary from the park ranger began, and you can enjoy occasionally her commentary broadcast into the Horizon Bistro and Horizon Court, deck 16 aft, or via your stateroom television. Tune in by selecting the movies and TV options, then the live TV, and then the bridge cam logo. When we were entering the inside passage, uh, she couldn't broadcast on the outside decks as Alaska has broadcast sound law that prohibits people to disturb the wildlife. But once we were in the inside passage, the broadcast began again. If you have any questions for the park rangers, you could find them at the park ranger information desk in the Vista Lounge on deck 7 aft from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. And they also had an Alaska Geographic Park store inside the same Vista Lounge. In an Alaskan cruise, a naturalist is always on the ship, and he or she narrates and broadcasts information throughout our cruise. And because of them, we can always spot wildlife during our cruise. In this cruise, we saw bald eagles, humpback whales, and sea otters. And I know other passengers were able to see more wildlife than us. On your cruise, you will receive some information about the Glacier Bay National Park a day before we arrive at Glacier Bay. I was reading that Captain George Vancouver first set eyes on a small five-mile inlet that was Glacier Bay back in 1974, and he described it as a sheet of ice as far as the eye could see. Glacier Bay covers over 3.2 million acres of forest, inlet, shore, mountain peaks rising over 15,000 feet and spectacular glaciers. Glacier Bay has many glaciers and we were able to admire the Reed Glacier, Lamplock Glacier and Marjorie Glacier. The full history of Glacier Bay National Park is very fascinating, so please take a moment to read your brochures and map that was handed to you by your stateroom attendant the night before we arrive at the park and don't forget to bring your Glacier Bay map to the Horizon Buffet if you are following the commentary of the park rangers at the Horizon area. It is very handy. You can follow the map along with the commentaries and you will know exactly where you are in the National Park. Marjorie Glacier is considered one of Alaska's most photographed glacier and one of Alaska's most active glacial phase, which is the calving of the glacier. The first time we did an Alaskan cruise, we didn't know what calving of a glacier meant. So one of the park ranger on the ship explained to us that a calving of a glacier is when a big chunk of ice break off at the end of a glacier because the forward motion of a glacier makes the end of it very unstable and also unpredictable. These glaciers can move forward over five feet or so a day. Glacier Bay is very deep. It is over a thousand feet deep. 
It was created by a glacier and filled in with salt water as the glacier retreated and the fjord at Glacier Bay was created. We are looking at Mercury Glacier, but it was so cold and foggy that day that the video didn't look as well as other times that we've come to Glacier Bay National Park, but it was still amazing to see it again. When we cruised before to Alaska, our naturalists explained to us that in the open ocean, the water was normal light blue color, but at the fjord is lime blue. The reason for that is that there is a lot of sediments in the ocean. As the glacier moves across the land, it grinds down rocks into a fine powder called rock flour. And when the iceberg graft off the glacier, it deposits that crushed rock into the water. Rock flour or glacier flour consists of fine grained, silt sized particles of rock, and it doesn't sink and it floats on the top of the water, giving the water a murky green color. I found this very interesting to share. Another interesting thing we heard on our cruise was that everybody knows an iceberg in the fjords is not very big. But when we see it in the waters, we can only see one seventh of the top of the iceberg. So now imagine how big an iceberg it really is. I was reading on our brochure of the Glacier Bay the reason the ice look always blue. When light hits highly compacted glacier ice, long wavelength colors like red are absorbed, while short wavelength colors like blue, for example, reflect back through the ice to our eyes. And that is why we see the icy blue color. Our park ranger said that the face of the Marjorie Glacier is always changing like many other glaciers in Alaska. Recently, this glacier was documented as one mile wide with a face that is about 200 feet above the waterline. The day we were at the Glacier Bay National Park was very foggy since very early in the morning, but when we were leaving the park, it cleared out, but we really couldn't appreciate the spectacular Marjorie Glacier, but I hope you can see how massive it was. We left Glacier Bay at around 2 p.m., while the Glacier Bay National Park rangers disembarked at the park headquarters at Bartlett Cove at the entrance of the park. This is our third port of call, Ketchikan. Ketchikan's real history dates back to 1883, when a man named Snow built a salmon saltery. By 1900, with a population of 800, the town was officially incorporated. Ketchikan is located on the western coast of Revilla Gigido Island, near the southernmost boundary in Alaska. It is 679 miles north of Seattle and 235 miles south of Juneau. Its population is 8,142 within city limits, with a total population including surrounding areas of 13,686. Ketchikan is the seventh most populated city in Alaska. The temperature in Ketchikan is in the low 60s during peak summer months and it has an average of 152 inches of rain per year. Ketchikan is the salmon capital of the world. Logging also became an important industry for Ketchikan and cruise ships started coming to the city through the Inside Passage making Ketchikan a popular port of call. Ketchikan is only accessible by sea and air. Most visitors arrive on large and small cruise ships and independent travelers can reach Ketchikan on the Alaska Marine Highway with a state ferry system. Ketchikan is also known as Alaska's first city because it's the first major community travelers come as they journey north. Their abundance in salmon drew the Tlingit people to this ideal area which they settled. By the late 19th century, gold and copper were discovered in the surrounding mountains, creating the need for a supply center and Ketchikan flourished. The downtown area is the main commercial district of Ketchikan, and it contains two large harbors, where several cruise ship docks. Since we arrived with Princess Cruise, we were able to dock next to the main harbor within walking distance from downtown Ketchikan. Downtown centerpiece is Creek Street, said to be the most photographed street in Alaska. Now it's full of shops and art galleries, 
but Creek Street was once the red light district. As I mentioned before, for passengers who are doing the Princess excursions, they will meet at a specific location for each short excursion departure, so always look at your ticket for the correct place and time. Taxis are located pier side and throughout the city, and a free shuttle bus runs every 20 minutes from the pier. On this cruise, we couldn't see the Aurora Borealis because the skies were not clear and we had a lot of fog. But if you are traveling to Alaska, you should download the app named My Aurora Forecast. And you can check the app and see if there is a chance that you might see the Aurora Borealis. It is very uncommon to see the Aurora Borealis, but I know some people who traveled last year on an Alaskan cruise in another ship, uh, they were able to see them at around 2 a.m. on a very clear sky. So who knows, you might see them the next time you travel to Alaska. In Ketchikan, there are so many excursions that you can do with the Princess Shore excursions or on your own. Just make sure that if you are taking a private excursion, you can come back to the port with plenty of time to return to the ship. Besides Victoria in Canada, we had a short stay in Ketchikan. We arrived at around 7 a.m. and people were able to disembark very fast as the ship got clearance to disembark passengers. And we had to be back in the ship at around 12.30 p.m. So you really need to plan in advance what you want to do, especially in Ketchikan, because of our short stay. Ketchikan has a variety of art galleries, specialty stores and general merchandise in the downtown area. If you need to go to a bank, you can find First Bank and Wells Fargo Bank. A post office is conveniently located at 3609 Tongas Avenue, and they are open from Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 5.00 p.m. There are also two visitor information centers in the downtown area. The main visitor information center is located near Birth 2 at 131 Front Street, and the second one is near Birth 3 at 417 Water Street. This is a great sign of Ketchikan for a nice picture with your family. But remember not to stand in the middle of the road. Ketchikan as well as Juno and Skagway have so many restroom facilities. I know this is not very important for some people, but since we travel with a toddler on this cruise, we always need to know where they are. This building was an information and tour center with a restroom facility and a small museum area. The best points of interest in Ketchikan with a princess excursion are the following. For example, the Outdoor Adventures. It's a ride-in and off-road vehicle, kayaking, hiking, nature watching and zip lining, and much more. The Totem State Park is a walk in a peaceful forest. This park is home to 14 totem poles and a replica of a 19th century clan house offering a look into the Tlingit and Haida native Alaskan culture. This is the Great Alaskan Lumberjack Show. The world champion athletes compete in a springboard chopping, back sewing, axe throwing, log rolling, and a 50 feet tree climb. You do not want to miss it. Another great excursion is the Alaska Rainforest Sanctuary. It is a 40-acre rainforest reserve home of bald eagles, black bears, seals, and many birds. And you can even watch a master native totem pole carver at work. At the Misty Fjords National Monument, you can take in the dramatic beauty of a land slowly crafted by nature. You will find 1,000-foot waterfalls and crystal lakes. 
On our last cruise to Alaska, after talking to some passengers, we were told that one of the best excursions in Ketchikan was the Misty Fjords, the Wilderness Explorer Cruise, the Backcountry Jeep, the Canoe Safari, and the Rainforest Trail e-bike and nature walk. You're looking now at the Ketchikan Duck Tour. This vehicle goes also into the water. We've done a tour like this back in Seattle, Washington a few years ago, and it was so much fun. With the Seattle Duck Tours, we were able to experience all the main areas of Seattle, including the waterfront, the downtown shopping district, Pike Place Market, and even Lake Union. Ketchikan has the world's largest collection of totem poles, and they are easily found in the downtown area, in museums and the totem parks. Another excursion that I forgot to mention was the Saxman Native Village. You can experience a rich living culture of the Tlingit as they welcome you into their village. And the last excursion I'd like to mention is the George Inlet Lodge. It's a former Canary bunkhouse built in 1940s, which is a part of a short excursion with Princess Cruz. Now it is time again to return to our ship and look at the welcoming committee for the passengers. I really like it. And my niece was dancing all the way into the ship. So please don't think an Alaskan cruise is not for children, as my niece loved everything during our cruise, especially the ports of calls and the tree house at Camp Discovery. And of course, the crew was amazing. On this cruise, we were not able to participate in a lot of Princess Cruise presentations, but we learned in the past that there are five different varieties of salmon in Ketchikan, and the way to remember their name was simply holding up one hand. Your thumb rhymes with chum, so the first one was the cham salmon. Your pointer finger can soak someone in the eye, so it is called sokai salmon. Your middle finger is the tallest, so it is King Salmon. You can put a silver ring on your ring finger, so it is called Silver Salmon. And your pinky. The pinky was the easiest one to remember because it was the Pink Salmon. Victoria in British Columbia, Canada was our last port of call. Victoria is the oldest city in Western Canada. It was established in 1843 as a Hudson Bay Company trading post. Victoria is located in the province of British Columbia in Canada on the southern tip of the Vancouver Island. Its population is 80,000 people within the metropolitan area and about 345,000 in the greater Victoria. Victoria has moderate weather. Spring and summer months range in temperature from 65 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit Canada is a bilingual country. The official languages spoken are English and French. However, visitors can expect English to be spoken. Victoria is considered the most British city in all of Canada. British Columbia's proud capital shows its colonial past and English heritage. Victoria is also called the city of gardens. No matter what season you come to Victoria, Victoria is always in bloom. It has the cherry blossoms in January, colorful tulips in March, fragrant lilacs in May, or regal roses in summer. Each spring, 1,600 flowers baskets adorn the lamppost of Victoria. The cruise ship docks in Ogden Point, located approximately 7 minutes via shuttle bus or a 30-minute walk from downtown Victoria. People were able to disembark at around 7.30 p.m., Taxis and limos were available at the pier near the ship. A shuttle bus service is provided every 10 to 15 minutes to and from town for a small fee. Shopping in Victoria is absolutely great. There are four areas where you can shop. The Bay Center on the Government Street. It is a large four-story shopping mall with over 90 stores. Government Street is where you find the best of the city's British imports. Lower Johnson Street, the Old Town area, and Chinatown. It is North America's second oldest Chinatown. The US dollar is accepted at all outlets in Victoria, 
and a currency exchange office remains open at the terminal building at the pier at all times when cruise ships are in port. One of the best points of interest in Victoria with a Prince ex excursion are the following. For example, the Butcher Gardens. In the Brentwood Bay, you will find the famous Butcher Gardens that host more than a million visitors each year. 55 acres of beautiful landscaped grounds and themed pavilions provide a unique experience for visitors. Another excursion is the Legislative Building Tour and City Tour. The building was built in 1893 in honor of Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee. In the evening, at the time we arrive at the port, it is illuminated by 3,500 light bulbs. Back in 2018, we did an Alaskan cruise with a relative, and she loved the Victoria Butterfly Garden. It is a 12,000 square foot enclosure of tropical paradise filled with a multitude of free flying butterflies. Another excursion to do is the whale watching. It is very amazing because you can see the killer whales in their natural habitat during a harbor cruise. We departed from Canada at around 11.50 p.m. and we headed to Seattle. This is the end of our video of the Port of Calls in Alaska with the Royal Princess. Please don't forget to watch our two videos of the Royal Princess in Alaska Part 1 and Part 2, where we do a complete narrated tour of the ship deck by deck and we give you some information and tips about the Royal Princess in Alaska. Please consider subscribing to our channel with the notification bell on so you'll know when we'll have our next video as we're getting close to our goal of 1,000 subscribers. Thank you very much.